you stand as we begin with prayer and pledge. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to thank you. Thank you for allowing us to begin our school board meetings with prayer. Thank you for teachers and administrations that put you first in their lives. Thank you for the teachers and staff that have impacted the lives of our recent graduated students. Thank you for the positive impact of our staff and administration that has on the lives of all of our children. We ask you to continue to watch over all of us and always direct us to make decisions to honor you. Please be with our superintendent as he travels on school board business today, and please be with our board member Cameron as he heals. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here and thank you all for being here today. Um, at this time, I'll, um, we're thankful that um, Mr. Lott is here in place of Mr. Um, Cowart and ask him to um, introduce our Joy School Elementary School. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we're privileged uh, this morning to have uh, Ms. Susan Lyles from JBES, and she's going to share with us a, a project uh, and an event that they had over at JBE, the first grade Mexican restaurant. So, Ms. Lyles, if you'll come forward. Um, Mr. Lott, may I interrupt real mm -hmm. quick? And um, do I hear a motion? I need to. I think I skipped adoption of the agenda. So, um, if you don't mind. Um, do I hear a motion to adopt our agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and we will continue. Good morning. Good morning. Um, excited to be here. I've been teaching for 29 years, and this is one of the most exciting, rewarding um, events I've ever done um, for the families, for the students, um, for the teachers. So, um, so I just want you to uh, so we have, uh, we wrote a grant, uh, Patty Coleman, our uh, team lead, wrote a grant um, to focus on our uh, economic, math, and real world experience, um, the standards that we have for that. So um, we were very uh, grateful to receive the grant. We've been doing this probably for about um, 15 years off and on to do it this year. It's been probably four, maybe four or five years since we've done it. So what we did was we looked at the standards for economics and um, and we looked at the life skills that we wanted our, to teach our students. And then we also covered parent communication, uh, giving them information about the grant, um, about the job applications, we sent job applications home. Um, the students had to do them themselves, and um, they did. It. We conducted interviews, and then the parents um, were uh, <coughs> given reservations so they could come to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And these are the standards that we covered. And these are the job applications. And um, my class has a lot of um, students who speak Spanish. So to make the job application easier for the parents, um, we translated um, all the material. So um, the students filled them out. They had three job um, positions that they could uh, apply for. And uh, this interview is adorable. Here we go. First choice. Cashier. Why is cashier your first choice? Because I'm good at money and I'm good at math and math is money because they play baseball. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say that somebody came to the restaurant and wanted to pay for five meals and each meal costs five dollars. Do you know how much they would owe you? So the one
$25. They would owe you $25, that's right. Um, maybe at our restaurant, we're gonna sell some cookies for a dollar. So if somebody wanted to buy one meal and two cookies, do you know how much they would owe you? Two cookies. <laughs> they would owe you $7, okay. Um, what was your second choice? A drink person, do you know what you'd have to do if you were a drink person? Um, you would um, get the drinks and have them out. Okay. Um, do you think you'd be able to carry more than one drink at a time if you had a tray? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, and which is your very first choice still? Um, it's still the cashier. Oh. Um, they took this very seriously, and they, uh, they, one of my students kept saying to me, I still get my first choice. I said, you're getting your first choice. <laughs> I don't want a, a disgruntled employee. <laughs> first choice. Oh, here's another one. Cashier. Why do you think you'll be a good cashier, girl? Because I really, really like math, and I really, really like money. And I want that money this week. That's right. So at our restaurant, our meals are going to cost five dollars each. So if you had somebody who wanted to pay for four meals, do you know how much money they would owe you? Twenty dollars. And if you had somebody who needed to pay you ten dollars and they gave you twenty dollars, do you know how much change you would have to give them? Ten dollars. That's right. Um, so, what's your second choice, Pearl? A waitress. A waitress. And what would you have to do to be a waitress? I would have to like greet the people after they say anything and take their orders and be a really be a good listener, yes. Um, why would you think it would be important to be a good listener? So that, like, I don't get their meal. That's right. Okay. And if you're a waitress, you have to carry some food on a tray. Do you think you could do that? Yes. We have to use two hands, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, actually, this is my class, and uh, we practiced. Uh, I have. As three raised students, um, I don't know if everybody knows what raised students are, but they um, they were my tutors um, for reading in my classroom um, every day. These were American <coughs> seniors. Um, I think two of them went to best or got accepted best or so. Um, I only have the best. <laughs> um, they were amazing. They loved these children and they. Um, all worked in restaurants, so they had restaurant um, experience. And I told them we're going to practice. So um, on the right, you see Kobe, and they're working um, with money. And a little girl speaks Spanish, so he did it all in Spanish with her. Um, and then the student on the left, um, I taught his mom <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> and. Um, the Unifix cubes are the actual toppings that you put on a uh, taco. We were serving tacos and taco salad, um, but hard and soft uh, shells. So they practiced the way they made, they would uh, look at the order, and then there is uh, the, the um, cubby is numbered one, two, three, four for each of the plates at a table. And so he would, um, he was setting up the, the plates and reading the menu, reading the order. So they were, they were practiced. Uh, this is the letter that we sent to the parents, letting them know uh, what we were doing. And um, we had parents uh, send $5 and we had these shirts made for every single child. And so everybody was in uniforms. And that's in Spanish. And um, then we sent, um, part of the letter that you saw before had a um, list of times that the parents could sign up for. And so we did, and then we responded by letting them know when their uh, reservation was. That way, 
Um, I only had five. I had five tables in my room, so with uh, about four, four to six settings. So I didn't gonna make sure that I, I had enough seating. Mm -hmm. So um, we did that. Every parent um, that could come when came those day. I got the reservations the next day. Um, the confirmation that they wanted to do. Um, there's the menu on uh, the left and on the right is the food order form that the students um, completed so they knew we numbered our tables and each table had um, the place that they were numbered so they knew um, you know each customer's order and then when they could bring it back they knew where it would go And there are our shirts and then um, this is the list of the jobs we had host we had bus a bus boy and girl we had drink um, servers cashiers um, wait people and cooks and the numbers are the numbers of my I, we number our students so there's no name so when they told me what they wanted to do I made sure that they I had enough um, jobs for everybody Um, and then these are class pictures of each class um, at the restaurant. Okay. We can sit on this one for a while. <laughs> okay, next. What was so exciting, and my husband came to um, Vaughn to, uh, to do this with me. He helped with the, um, with the cooking. And I told him, I said, you're going to see them jumping up and down. And literally, they were bouncing while they were waiting. And when our first customer came, they yelled, customer! <laughs> and then they all went to their position. But they were literally just bouncing out of excitement because they got to do something that was realistic it was yeah. real world it was real money it was real food and you've been asking me are you sure you know we're doing real food not the cubes i said it is real food <laughs> and they're like but we don't have an uh, we don't have an oven and i said well the meat is going to be cooked ahead of time you're just going to put so they were concerned that you know we were really going to pull this off And then we had a tip jar, and the parents were very generous. So we're going to use the tips to uh, have pizza parties uh, tomorrow. And yeah, uh, so we're going to um, This is really exciting. Uh, my daughter was a band member, and um, it was the greatest experience. <coughs> But uh, it was the greatest experience for her because she felt like she belonged to a wonderful, wonderful um, organization. Um, we asked the uh, band teacher, and I've never, I haven't met him, but I, I'm just super proud of, of everything he's done. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the jazz band come and play, and they played. Um, this we couldn't find a car yet. So we decided that we had some free labor. They, and the, the next one will show the, the video of them. And they played in every class. Most about me working at the restaurant? Uh, 
You're with that cleaning. Okay, thank you. Would you like to have a restaurant in your class another day? Yes. That would be fun. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, James. Yeah, last week we had our classroom restaurant. What was your job at the restaurant? Um, I was a server. Server. Did you like being a server? Yes. Yes. What did you like about being a server? Well, I liked taking their orders. I liked bringing them. Okay. Do you think you were a good server? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That I was a good Would you like to be a server again another day in a restaurant? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, good day. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> so um, it was just an amazing experience. Um, I hope you do it every year. Um, the children loved it. The parents, the parents had just big grin on their face. And afterwards, they were telling me that their, you know, their child had been asking every day, when it, when it, when it, is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? I had it on my calendar. I didn't, you know, any field trip or anything. I put it right here. We still have 24 more days, so, <laughs> you know, or next month. So um, I just was thrilled to see the children. Um, they ran it. I literally sat down at a table and hung out and talked to parents and the children ran it and they knew what to do and it's incredible that six and seven year olds um, felt confident to, to do a real job. So, thank you very much. That is thank awesome. You. Great. That's great, and thank you for sharing that with us. I would just say, you, you know, Ms. Lyle, grants are such hard work to just do a grant, and then all the uh, planning that takes place, and uh, you know, these are the kind of activities where you can apply those real-world uh, skills to the standards that, um, even though they take a lot of work, are so rewarding for our kids and build self-esteem, especially. I imagine for the Hispanic kids that were in class, I mean, it's a, it had to be uh, just a tremendous uh, activity and things you'll remember, but also probably more importantly, they will remember. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, so thank you for your hard work. I will tell you, Mr. Lott, on that, Ms. Coleman and I had a senior graduating last year and was asked, um, what's the one thing you remember from your school experience? And they said the first grade high school. Yeah. 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 That is that's terrific. Please continue. <laughs> that's good. Um, thank you very much. We'll move on to item number six. Um, Ms. Heather Rollins. accompanied by an annual allocation of funds. However, with the state shifting and budgeting, it's no longer categorical. So it's um, going to be now grouped in with the rest of the base student allocation, and we carve out a certain amount of it every year to meet the requirements of this plan. Um, it basically depicts the roles of administration at the district level, the school level, how we're going to work together through professional development, assessment, curriculum, all of the things to increase student performance in the area of reading. We share it with all of our stakeholders, it's shared with teachers, it's shared with parents, and basically has us all hopefully working on the same team to see our students do better in the area of reading. Go ahead. 
There were some statutory changes that happened this year. One of them is the one I'm standing in front of you right now. But typically it was sent to DOE first, approved by them, and then I brought it back to you all for your approval. That's now reversed. So you get to stamp it first and say that it's approved by you, and then it's gonna get sent to DOE um, for their approval. They um, also took away the requirement for us to use a mandatory template. However, I use the template that they shared because I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So um, the submission date also changed slightly, which is another reason why I'm here. Go ahead. Um, I had to submit a reflection on this year's plan and then create the current plan get it approved by you, and all is due to DOE by June 15th. The July 1st date is now kind of a non-starter because of the change they made in um, budgeting. So now it's uh, up to our wonderful financial director to carve that money out for us every year, um, which she has already done. So we are um, set to go for, for this coming year. So, um, when you look at your materials, you'll see more of an itemized uh, breakdown of how the budget is allocated for the money that we do receive. This just kind of gives you a big picture look at how the money is spent. We do um, give the charter schools a proportional share right off the top of this um, allocation. Then the majority of our funds are spent on putting literacy coaches in each of our schools. So we um, fund that heavily through, um, through the K-12 plan. Without the K-12 plan, we would not, I don't foresee that we would be able to have a reading coach in every school. So we're very fortunate that we have this pot of money to pull from. Under supplemental instructional materials, you'll find things like the materials for third grade summer reading camp, um, some of the initiatives being funded for intensive reading classes on the secondary side. Um, all of that comes out of that pot of money. In the other categories, we pay for things like reading endorsement classes that we facilitate for teachers, and so teachers get to take those for free. All of that good stuff comes kind of in like an other category for us. As a part of the K-12 plan, we do set student achievement goals um, for this year. And this is fresh off the press um, data, so we literally were still doing makeup testing, so the numbers still may shift slightly prior to its submission to DOE. Um, but you can see here a reflection of how we are currently performing on the new FAST assessments in each of our grade levels, including pre-K. Um, I will say we have a lot of digging into data to do, and I know Ms. Lewis will be presenting to you, I'm sure, shortly in the coming weeks on data. But at first glance, when you look at third through 10th grade data specifically, we are pretty comparable to performance last year in most areas. Um, there are some grade levels that are higher than they were last year on FSA. So we, we have some digging in to do, some problem solving to do, specifically on the 9-10 side um, for this new test and what it looks like for our high schoolers. So we have, so we have some things to work out. We also have some things to celebrate and just some areas where we've maintained, which when we're shifting to computer-based assessments for the first time for third through sixth graders, that I'm happy to say that we maintained or we're very close to maintaining our levels of proficiency from last year. So go ahead, please. Um, the K-12 plan also requires that we set up school literacy leadership teams. It, this just lets you know who's supposed to serve on those teams. Media specialists are not available on all of our campuses. We only have two campuses that have a certified media specialist, and that person's not necessarily serving in the role of media specialist. But if they do have one of those folks, then they can participate on this team. I will say this is a fancy name for this team. This is what the K-12 plan would call this team. But this team is a team that serves in multiple capacities on most campuses. So they're most likely just called your lead team. Um, they serve as decision makers for all areas. So we don't necessarily create a special team, it's just a team that also serves in this capacity. Right, the K-12 plan has us identify how we progress monitor our students in the area of reading. So you'll see here kind of a list of assessments for kindergarten through fifth grade that we do administer to keep a uh, thumb and a pulse on how our students are doing. The numbers that are there off to the side let you know how many times those assessments are administered. We do have some changes um, in kindergarten through fifth grade for next year. You'll see next to iReady it only says two. So this coming year, we will be taking the scores our students just got on diagnostic three and importing those into next year so that we save our first through fifth grade students from having to take another assessment right there at the get-go. So we're really excited about that um, for a lot of reasons, not minimizing testing as best we can. And also, our kids tend to perform better on Diagnostic 3 anyway. We get a truer picture of who they are, um, so they can kind of start the year where they left off the previous year. Um, kindergartners, of course, will be new to us, so they will be 
taking that test um, a little differently. Uh, imagine literacy is the other one that's a change. Our ELL students currently take that three times a year. They're bringing that down to two. So they have a beginning and an end, but they will, won't have to do one in the middle of the year. So again, trying to get that um, assessment down as much as we can while still keeping a pulse check on how our students are doing. Go ahead. For 6 through 12, very similar. IXL is the iReady of uh, middle and high school. So IXL doesn't look, isn't as intensive um, as far as they take one really lengthier diagnostic at the beginning. And then if they're keeping up to date with their diagnostic all the time, it's a lot shorter for that middle and end. So we didn't see a need to change the number there. Lexia Power Up and Lexia English are new programs coming online this year for use in intensive reading. Um, Lexia Power Up for all middle school intensive reading students. So it has an assessment that's, it places them at the beginning and then ongoingly assesses all year. And then Lexia English is just for our English language learners, six through 12. Um, so again, just keeping a track on how they're doing over the course of the year. Achieve 3000 is another intensive reading specific program for ninth through 10th graders. So we monitor the plan in lots of ways. We keep a lot of data. We do walkthroughs via administrators. Our reading coaches are also uh, responsible for a lot of monitoring of the K-12 plan via supporting teachers in their planning, observing instruction, keeping up with coaching logs, things like that. We do a lot of different um, check-ins to make sure that the aspects of the K-12 plan are actually happening. Reading coaches are defined very specifically in the K-12 plan. The big three that um, are like absolutely positively necessary or you cannot have a job are the top three. Um, so the bachelor's degree, the reading endorsement or certification, and highly effective. If you don't have those three things, you cannot sit in the seat of a reading coach. All those other things, we hope and pray for. Um, but we absolutely have the best cohort um, here in Levy County of reading coaches. This year we had two brand new coaches who were in their first year. And then we had one school who was out without a coach for most of the year as their coach um, left in about October. This coming year, that means we'll have three new um, because we have one filling that slot, one coach who's retiring, and one coach who's shifting to a different job. Um, so we still have a lot of training to do of our reading coaches simply because sometimes those uh, folks change. It hasn't happened in the last few years. We've been very fortunate. We've had a very steady uh, group of reading coaches, but we do have um, some new faces. All wonderful people, though, so we're very excited to have them. Um, this just lets you know that we kind of sign on to the fact that um, our reading coaches prioritize coaching, that that is their primary job, um, that they, we try to limit all of their other responsibilities so that they spend most of their time with teachers, training teachers, supporting teachers, coaching teachers, mentoring teachers. That is the job. Um, that's the drum that I beat repeatedly um, just because they're, they're valuable uh, team players in lots of ways, but we have to try to prioritize their time towards um, supporting teachers. Some professional development um, we have to outline in the K-12 plan, what we're going to focus on for next year. You just heard me say that reading coaches is one of my areas of professional development simply because we have some new faces and so we'll continue to train those folks and help them to be successful. Um, explicit instruction is a district-wide focus for next year. Um, if you haven't heard um, about that quite yet, it's something that we're weaving into all subject areas, all grade levels, all um, everywhere. So we're definitely picking that up in ELA and running with that. Um, we also every year have to um, identify model classrooms, mentor teachers at each of our campuses so that teachers are able to go and visit those classrooms to, um, to develop themselves. Go ahead. We also have to provide differentiated PD based on data. This comes via the reading coach. So reading coaches working with specific teachers based off of their specific needs. We're continuing to work around the new best standards. We still have things to learn in those areas, with this being our first year of the new <coughs> assessment. The writing assessment comes online next year, so we still have a lot of a lot of things left to learn. Science of reading, if you haven't heard, is the hot ticket item around these parts. So we are definitely doing a lot of uh, development in that area. A big focus for me this year, and will continue to next year, are intensive reading teachers. These are very important folks on our secondary campuses. And so continue to pour into them, develop them, and help them to be successful. Um, what that has looked like this year is every quarter, myself and Marcy Young, who has served in our MTSS coordinator position this year, have met with every single teacher on every campus for a solid day at the end of every quarter, and has allowed us to do data-based problem solving with them, train them on specific programs, 
lots of good stuff. We saw a really good um, return on that investment. So we're excited to continue that into the coming year. New in the K-12 plan this year is a description of what's happening in pre-K in Levy County. So I had Ms. Childs uh, help me with that section of the plan. So she had to identify how we're assessing our students, how we, uh, what standards we use, what curriculum we're using, uh, the class framework is how she um, is tasked with examining the instruction happening in the classroom and then how we go about meeting the differentiated needs via MTSS for our pre-K students. So she completed that portion of the plan that you'll find on page 12 in the, in the document. Go ahead. We also have to describe how we are meeting for Florida's formula for success, how we are addressing all the areas of reading, those six components, how we are utilizing various types of assessments, how we're providing wonderful core instruction, and then how we're providing intervention for our students at both a tier two and a tier three level. Go ahead. In elementary, that means we have to have a 90 minute reading block in Levy County. We have 120 minutes. We are extremely fortunate that we carve out that time um, for, our, for our teachers, for them to have a solid 120 minutes. M most campuses is 120 minutes uninterrupted. Uh, we do have some campuses that do a 90 and then a 30, but the 90 is the only piece that's absolutely required for it to be uninterrupted. So we take care of that with our elementary reading blocks. And then at the end of the document, go ahead Morgan, you'll see what are called decision trees. Um, decision trees start on about page 16 for kindergarten through fifth grade of the K-12 plan. <coughs> and these identify how we take all of that assessment data that I've been talking about and how we make decisions for what level of intervention a student may need. If they score this, we provide this level of intervention per our decision tree. So we have K to five, a to K to five decision tree, a six to eight, and a nine through 12 moving into next year. So it helps us use all the available data that we have and identify what level of support that student's going to receive. And we have to identify what evidence-based materials we're going to use to meet that need. So we can't just choose a random curriculum, we have to make sure that whatever we're choosing has been vetted, has research behind it, all that good stuff. Go ahead. We have to identify what specifically we do to identify students with a substantial reading deficiency via the K-12 plan, so those would be our tier three students, and what we do differently for those students. You will see via a new house bill, I believe it's house bill 7839, if I'm not mistaken, that math is gonna get the same amount of love in this area, so we're going to be identifying students with some substantial math deficiencies now as well. So in having to identify how we're meeting the needs of those students. Go ahead. We have to show what we're doing in third grade summer reading camp. And um, this year, it's students who score level one on third grade fast have been invited. Um, we, I purchased the materials through the K-12 plan. We have to have highly effective reading endorsed teachers teaching third grade reading camp. So it's sometimes tough to get those folks in the summer. Um, so. We have them ready and set to go for our campuses for this year, and we're set to provide that camp June 5th through June 29th of this year. We also, in the K-12 plan, go ahead, Morgan, show that we offer additional summer camps. So we are inviting specific kindergarten, first, second, fourth, and fifth graders as well. The K-12 the, um, K plan doesn't touch on what we're offering for secondary. Those kids have um, summer camp options in Levy County as well, but the K-12 plan is mostly concerned with K-5 to offerings. Go ahead. And finally, we have um, a family engagement portion of the um, K-12 plan where we have to identify how we're using what's called the Read at Home plan. This is a plan that gets updated every year. DOE gives us some specific things to update and then we provide some Levy County specific information. This plan is posted on our district website. There's copies of it in every front office. We hand this, a copy of this plan to, every, to a parent of a tier three student for having a meeting with that family, so we try to make it as readily available as possible. And then we're also heavily promoting the New World's Reading Initiative for K-5, so this is um, where students who are identified as having a reading deficiency can receive free books in their home. Um, so we promote that with Tier 2 and Tier 3 students, definitely heavily with Tier 3 students, and we have many of our families that are already receiving this. So it resets every year. Eligib eligibility is dependent on the data that we share with the state, so um, those families go and do their application totally online and so we are um, excited about the number of families we already have and we continue to try to drum up business for New World's Reading Initiative. The new house bill, um, same one I think as the math change, is now going to include pre-K in this. So now our pre-K students can also get free books to their home. 
So we're excited about that change for our pre-K families. Any questions for me about K-12 CERT or anything I can answer or clarify for you? Yes, ma'am. Just one quick question. Sure. And I know you said you have a lot more data to look through. Yes. And I know the FAST is new, but based on what y'all have researched now, <clears throat> Do you have an opinion as to like the secondary looking at the chart, <clears throat> the percentages, why in the secondary? I mean, it looks like great, great, great up here and then all of a sudden secondary and it goes. I, um, we have a lot of theories. I don't know <laughs> if we necessarily have a solid answer for you. Even, um, and Ms. Lewis could help me speak to this, but even our students who um, what they are classified right now as off grade testers, so our kids that were advanced, um, so like our highest performing kids sitting in ninth grade who took the 10th grade test, even the data on those students is not good. Um, so there's, there's definitely something, something there. Um, uh, with the change in standards, the rigor definitely shifted in secondary. The types of texts our students are having to read definitely shifted. We're talking about lots of texts that were not written any time in this century kind of, um, <laughs> kind of things and asking students to process those texts. We have concerns about students that um, we're a level three and then a level four on the second PM and all of a sudden became a level two on the third one. So we've got some concerns. Melissa is in very close contact with DOE about those concerns. Is it um, I mean, is it happening? It's happening across the state. Over? It's happening across the state. Yeah. We even had that happen in third grade a little bit too. And I think we watched those two grades very closely for a reason, but we had kids who were proficient on <laughs> PM1, proficient on PM2, and then something changed for PM3, but they have a really high I-Ready score, so they're going on to fourth grade. So, I mean, it's not, we have some discrepancies that we're still working through. There's a lot of things that are gonna happen on the assessment side this summer with standard setting and things like that. Right. Um, so we're hoping to have more answers. Um, I know they're debating about, especially on the high school side, whether PM1 and PM2 could count for a student, um, because if they're proficient, then they should, you know, they right. should be proficient, uh, period, in the story. So there's, I think there's still a lot to learn there. Um, how writing's gonna play into that. Writing <coughs> won't count on the student side, but it will count for school accountability. So I think there's, there's lots, of, lots of questions. But high school definitely took a hit this year. Um, I will say, looking at the data on our students that are not 10th graders and took the 10th grade test um, has kind of confirmed a decision we had already made about not advancing students um, moving, not skipping a grade level's worth of content for students. Um, so we're talking about kids typically that skip like eighth grade ELA to be able to take English one and then English two. Right. And that I feel like has created some of the gaps for those students because they skipped an entire grade level and skipped in the middle of a shift in standards. So we're looking at kind of bringing that back and just advancing our eighth graders through the other ways that we advance them via pre-AP courses or things like that versus moving them straight to English one because we feel like we're creating some gaps yeah. for our high performers and in that way That's as well. So it kind of confirmed mm -hmm. some of that by looking at this data because they didn't perform any better than their peers. Um, the percentages are almost, the breakdown's almost identical. If you look at them as a group and you look at kids that are true 10th graders as a group, the right. breakdown in level ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, about the same. Mm. That'd be so interesting have, to see. Um, we attended FOIL uh, conference last week and their, um, the assessment office was um, very present. Um, they actually wrapped the conference up with assessment and accountability, which kept everyone there until the last second. Um, Heather alluded to uh, content or standard setting that's happening the last week in July. We have seven teachers that were selected from our district to be on these teams. They're assigned to specific grade levels and either ELA or math. Um, what they will be doing is reviewing question levels, uh, cut scores, all of that will be set um, following that um, week with those teachers. So it's really cool that teachers are involved. We're excited to have some of our teachers on it so they can come back to us and share what did that look like. Maybe in the future we can have you know, more teachers because um, they, they nominated themselves, but initially they have to be nominated by the superintendent. What we will get from that is um, all of the kids are getting scores immediately, which is actually a really nice thing because we don't have to wait until June to figure out how our kids did, um, at, at least in these subjects. Um, but after standard setting in the fall, they will actually release, um, I guess the best way to describe it is student scores again based on the new standard setting, the new scores. 
So where a kid, and this is just a random example, where right. a kid might have scored a three if maybe they were right on that line between a three and a four, depending on how the setting goes, their score could look different in the fall after the standards are reset. It will not change what has been reported. So what's reported now is the fi final score. But teachers will be able to observe how that might shift looking at scores in the future. Um, school grades will be released. Um, they're saying more along the lines of December, January-ish, I guess, because um, they're going to wait on the, the standard setting to be complete. Um, and just remembering that school grades this year are pretty much just informational purposes only. There's no um, there's no ramifications from it, I guess is what I'm saying. And um, it will not include learning gains, which is a, a big part of our normal grade. So it does feel like they're, they're going to look very different because everything's going to be based on proficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that they are assigning grades is whatever percent um, of schools in the state scored or uh, earned a, an A last year, that same percent off of the top will be an A this year. So that's how they'll assign the letter okay. grades out. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to seeing that. We're already tracking um, how our schools are performing with the performance. That's the cool thing, the numbers are there. Right. Um, and while the numbers are really, I call them pretty raw because um, there are kids that come off of the results based on you know, when they enrolled in our district right now, this, the scores that we see are all the kids. Um, but kids will come off of that if they have been in our schools all year and with other factors. So we're, we're excited. So you will see on the decision tree because of the high school um, concern, um, right. because typically a level one student ends up in intensive reading, typically. Um, so you will see on the decision tree an and or rule that, top, that references a percentile rank instead of just a level because you could have a whole lot of kids scoring level one in the state of Florida, so we're looking at like the 25th percentile or lower. So there could be some kids that score level one who don't end up in intensive reading simply because of numbers and class size and things like that for next year, but it's because they're not in the bottom 25% of, of level one, or the bottom 25% of their grade level. So we're trying to give schools some room just because we are concerned about numbers, on the, specifically on the high school, high school side. Um, but at the same time, it's a graduation requirement, so we're wanting to, <laughs> wanting to address the need at the same time, so it's a little bit of a balancing act until we know more. But I am interested to see how many of those scores shift based off of standard settings. So. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? If there are no other questions, do I hear a motion to approve the reading plan? <coughs> so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank, Thank you for your great presentation. Ms. Kaylee Wade. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to bring you some results of negotiations that we've recently settled. Um, the first one I'm going to do is the MOU. Um, as you remember, last year we had increased the segment rate for the instructional personnel, so we're coming back and finishing this with the ESP because, as you know, salaries have been increased, and so we're trying to do that. So. Um, the employees have voted and ratified their section, so I'm just looking for board approval on the ESP. Are there any questions regarding this? I guess I should ask. Do I hear a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. So next, we finished up contract negotiations. This was the year to um, renegotiate our contract. We started in November and finished up beginning this month. Um, so um, both sides had an opportunity to pass some things. A lot of things were just kept the same. A lot of things were just cleaning up language or spelling out certain things, making our um, contract a little bit easier to read. Um, some points were bolded, headers, and things like that. Um, as you look through there, were there any questions regarding any of the language? No, I mean, you helped me with some questions earlier. I mean, just being being new, I know it. We've see, I've seen as a new school board member um, snippets, mm -hmm. not all of this change at once, but um, possibly moving forward, um, even with Mr. Whitehurst here now as a new member, 
that like the original contract can or we can be designated to an area here's the original contract and then we can take it from there and break it down as to the how these changes yeah we can do that and forward. this is just a reminder this is done every three years three. so it's not done every year it's every three years um, once we get board approval um, we will sit down with Sherry Tyndale she types out our contract so all of this will be updated in the contract and a new one will be posted on the website so but we can do that next year yes awesome. okay. do I hear a motion to approve I make a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Second. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Eastman? Two of them responded, you see on the bid sheet, the other one was Wilkes and Gas. Um, as you can see, there's a big difference in markup, uh, and that's probably because Suburban Burbank currently has it, and has had it in the past, and they provide some of the tanks we own, some of the tanks they own, so I think somebody looking into here wanted to kind of have a bigger markup if they were going to bring their own tanks in here, so my recommendation, recommendation would be to go with Suburban Burbank. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes to go with them. Thank you very much. Mr. Lott? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, bring before you a uh, proposal to uh, some changes in our student code of conduct and again, uh, like many things that I bring to you, this is a team approach. Uh, we got a lot of the changes come from uh, administrators at the school level. Uh, Mr. Gore uh, and Mr. M uh, Morgan Bennett uh, assisted me greatly in, in a lot of this as well. I'm not going to go through every change, but I will try to hit some of the highlights and answer any questions that you may have uh, as we go through. Um, we did see some changes in statute, which had some implications, uh, and we'll talk about those uh, as we go. Um, you see, like on the very first one, is a good example of something that came to us from one of the schools, um, and they said they were having some, some issues with um, parents really understanding where to find the attendance policies, um, and we have the, these as well in our pupil progression plan, but we wanted to point out where they may be able to find uh, that information in regard to attendance. Um, and as we go down to page 15, we had some issues where kids that um, had withdrawn and went home school um, to avoid potentially an alternative placement were still um, they were, they were trying to go to homeschool, but then still come back to us and uh, participate or also attend extracurricular activities. And so uh, our staff wanted to put something in there to just point out they're not supposed to be on campus if they were going to be placed in an alternative setting. Um, there was some uh, questions on our extracurricular policy page 16 there in regard to um, out of school suspension and probation and how long uh, that would be and we just put it in line with what we had in, in another section in regard to 30 calendar days and we specified that that came at a request of one of our principals and then we start getting into our infractions and um, all a lot of these changes that uh, you'll see I'm not going to go through all of them basically what I tried to do is to um, the state came up with some new CISER definitions, and so what I try to do is to mirror their language so that there's no confusion. Um, so I took their definitions and applied them to what we already had in, in many cases, just a difference in language. And so you'll see where a lot of strikeouts and additions um, that were made based on those new CISER, CISER definitions that came to us from the state. <coughs> So you can scroll through those. I'm not going to go into every one of them because there are so many. Let's see. Let me 
can see there are several. Mr. Law, yes. is threat and intimidation um, it's D and is that a se separate area? It's D and H. It took over firecrackers and fireworks. Is that the same thing or is it supposed to be listed in two different areas? We just, what happened on that is we took out firecrackers and fireworks. We don't see that as a, a ongoing issue. Okay. And so H was just replaced with threats and intimidation. Okay. So, so we just duplicated it from above? Okay. Is it a, I'm sorry. No. Okay. So th threats and intimidation, sometimes we have things that are different levels, and so that one is a different level. Okay. Um, it's the same incident, I believe. Let me double check that. Okay. Are you saying with the bullying and the, which ones are you saying is H? I'm saying look at D under infractions. If you look at D on page 22, and right. then mm -hmm. if you look at H, H. on page 25. Yeah. I would double check to see and make sure that those are not in the same um, category. You know, we have level one infractions, we have level two yes, infractions sir. stuff. I'll double check to make sure that it's not duplicated. There are some things that you'll find that could be duplicated because the severity of the incident itself uh, has risen to a different level. Okay, yes, But I'll, I'll double check that to make sure it's not duplicated within the same level. Like, this is not a, um, we just brought out the changes, and so it kind of jumps around a little bit. <laughs> right. So sometimes it's uh, hard to, follow it's cool yeah. to mm -hmm. ascertain whether or not that had occurred. Yeah. yeah, I saw multiple times when I read it, and there was some stuff felt like it was duplicated, but it's like, you know, like I said, it might be because you're not seeing the whole document to understand. Right, right. right. And, but we will, we will double check. We certainly don't want to duplicate it within the same level. Thank you. Yes, sir. You'll see some changes in bullying, um, which came um, via the state statute. And so we had to make some changes in regard to that. And by the way, we will have to bring that uh, policy, our bullying policy, back before the board. So there'll be some changes in that. Uh, you'll see that later on in the summer. Uh, we're required every three years to re readdress uh, that particular policy. There are some policies, like the wellness policy, that's done on a regular uh, schedule, uh, bullying, corporal punishment. Those are all things by statute that we have to bring back to the board on a regular schedule um, for you to approve uh, any changes that may be made or that you feel like needs to be made. Um, but that's a statutory requirement. So you'll see some changes there in regard to bullying. You'll see some changes uh, on page uh, 37 at the bottom. You'll see that we had a strike through on um, some laws that were, are no longer in, in place and replaced by other um, legislation. <coughs> We added some things in regard to, to employees and how these incidents may apply to them. Um, and then um, if you go down to where reports to law enforcement, you'll see that we've captured uh, some changes that have occurred um, in regard to what we have to, to report to law enforcement, which really kind of goes hand in hand with many of the new changes to CISER, um, and those are required uh, to be reported as well. Um, the schools asked for some clarification on uh, alternative placement and how a, a student may end up in an alternative uh, placement situation. So we, we clarified that administrative placement, felony placement, 
uh, electronic monitoring devices, um, like placement, um, we don't predetermine pre exactly um, that placement, but we did want to outline that it is possible that a student may be um, assigned to alternative placement depending on the situation for that student. In other words, uh, if they were in a DJJ facility uh, for a particular reason, they may um, be placed within our focus, uh, which is a, a re more restrictive uh, placement until um, they basically have demonstrated that they're not a threat to school safety and security. If a student were to come and be placed within the school a regular setting and records were late and we received records after the fact, are we allowed to then say, okay, we have the records now, you can't be in? It happens more often than we would like, okay. particularly with and students um, that are coming from out of state. Um, we seem to have more issues with that. Sometimes we have students that come to us from a private school and they're not as timely on, on getting us the, the records that we really need to make an informed decision in regard to placement. So uh, I think that the, the, the important thing here is we'll make decisions based on what is best for our schools, right. our school security, um, and once that information is available, we will make those determinations um, with school safety in mind always. Mr. Lott, could we wait? Could we make a policy that we aren't allowed to have transfer students or admit students until we get those records to make that decision? Well, um, depends depends on the student. It depends on the student's situation. Or, I mean, um, we typically don't wait. It's best uh, generally to put a school to okay, enroll yeah. the student in school. Um, and there are some situations where we're not allowed by law to wait. Um, mm -hmm. Students with disabilities, homeless students. Um, so there are some um, categories of students that by, by law we're not allowed to uh, delay enrollment. We have to enroll them with the knowledge that we have at the time. Wow, that seems dangerous. Um, we had a request by, and we had a situation where students were uh, parking on another campus. Um, they were asked to not park there. Um, and we had nothing in our student code of conduct outlining what our procedures um, and conditions would be for student parking. And so we put some um, information in there in regard to student parking. That's on page 44. And just some minor, minor uh, information that we, we added. We also had to do quite a bit, and Mr. Grant helped uh, a lot on the PPI, which is something that um, it is very prevalent um, in, in new policies uh, statewide, and it's very confusing. Uh, so we added some things in uh, what um, kind of information is PPI, um, what can be shared, what can be shared, and that goes along with FERPA. So we added some language there in regard to FERPA. And this uh, directory at the end there, obviously we we'll probably will have some changes there. Um, we have, we've noted some changes we already know of that could possibly change before this goes to print. So we added Mr. Whitehurst. And then um, <laughs> Ms. Wade supplied us with a new school board of Levy County notice of non-discrimination um, that we had to replace what we had um, to be compliant with that. And then the last on um, the notice of directory information and performance release. This is uh, always an issue uh, for our schools uh, in just basically making sure that kids that we take pictures of, if we put it in on, on Facebook or some uh, other publication that um, we have parent permission to do so. Uh, every year we try to modify this and change it to make it more user friendly and so these suggestions came to us from one of our principals. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, we'll try this, see if it's better for our schools and for our parents and then we'll go from there. Um, I anticipate 
we may make some more changes, <laughs> but uh, we'll go with what we have uh, if it's okay with you for now. What's the response that you get back from um, parents turning this back in, to authorize the pictures or anything? You no, know, I would say that um, in you know years past uh, we had very little response and there was not a lot of um, input from parents um, saying, oh, "No, I don't want my." students information shared i don't want my students picture on uh, say our school websites and facebook or what have you um, i think that this is uh, something that has uh, we're seeing more and more parents that do not want their kids pictures shared that do not want information shared we're seeing an uh, increased number of parents that are in fact um, filling this out and bringing it back to us well, and I think that's good. I'm glad to hear that. But I think this is a lot of work. It's a lot of things. It, it's very necessary. But I know that when we're here at these expulsions, and you know, we ask, these are our rules. These are this is our code of contact. Contact, and they, they, they don't they act like they don't even know it or acknowledge or know it even exists. I mean, can I'm just asking. I'm kind of grasping. What what can we do to encourage parents to read it? To maybe return that they've read it. To, to acknowledge all of this in our and well, there is contact. actually another page that obviously we didn't change it but we we have a page that they return mm -hmm. so, the, the students have to sign. and do we have a lot of response on that too well we do the best we can I mean we um, yeah. I know that okay. in a formal former life as a principal I used to have um, like reward systems so depending on the setup first period homeroom you know, once your um, class got all of them back, you got a reward. Uh, the first one got, you know, uh, a certain reward, and the kids would, and the, and the teachers would get the reward, a reward too. So, you know, I think our schools still do things like that, uh, make it um, sort of a competitive thing to try their best. But unfortunately, with a lot of things that we we, we send home. Um, sometimes it doesn't make it home and certainly doesn't make it back um, right I, I know I understand that and I know they're trying to do that I just want to encourage anything that we can do so that we do the parents do get that and get it back yes but I mean they are bound by this whether they return it or not being yeah. being on the school yes. the student right I mean that's the way it reads well we right. give every student in fact the reason we bring we're bringing this to you today is so that Hopefully we can get it approved and then get it to our printers so yes. that we'll have it uh, back in sufficient number on the first day of school right. so that every kid gets one that first day of school and then um, they are encouraged to take them home, have the parents sign it, they sign it, and then bring back that signature page so that we have uh, documentation that they did in fact receive it. I mean, we can't ever have a circumstance to where someone says, well, you didn't have my piece of paper where I signed it, so I'm not bound by this. I mean, that's like there. Well, our our teachers in our schools do give them, and once that they, once they're they get it, they are bound, bound by. Bound by. It. That's why. That's right. Yeah. I didn't want something. Oh, well, I never. You don't have my sheet of paper where I signed it, so I'm not. You know, these rules don't apply. You well, know. they can say that. They can say it, but <laughs> right, but implicitly, <laughs> it is right. Right. Before school starts, we have to get it printed by the end of June. So with that, we certainly need to make a motion to approve um, unless you have any comments or anything so that we can get this going and get it out there so we can get it back for our students. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Locke. Um, I will start with... Um, Comments? Are there anyone that would like to address anyone to address the board with anything? Dr. Hall, you want to address the board or anything? <laughs> Save that for a second. <laughs> <Last week. laughs> Thank you. Um, if there's no public comments, I'll um, ask for a motion to approve our minutes from the May 9th meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Our consent agenda, I think we've all spoken and had a chance, but Mr. Whitehurst, is there anything you'd like to ask? No, my question for answer. Thank you, Ms. Clemency. Oh, my answer. Ms. Gordon. I was late getting Mr. Power. I will say. <laughs> um, 
j just quickly the the chalk talk is that new or what have we had that in the past probably Miss Mrs. Lewis knows um, I know that it's been because it's, it's been discussed for more than this year but I don't recall that we actually had it it's a um, reading program yeah reading program to support it just didn't say title funds so I didn't know if it was new or, or it's brand new you know I first year like it looks like it's coming out of um, K-12 reading bring it I know Heather and Michelle great are the team working on it okay so that's the only sorry, that's as much info as I have <laughs> doesn't ring a bell to me but sometimes their names change but it's coming out of the allocation that she was Okay. Thank you. That's and all I have. If I recall correctly, it's um, supposed to be a great support in getting kids to pass it as SAT and ACT for concordance course. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Sure. And I mind having answered. Um, do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda? I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our finance agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Finance agenda um, passes. Do we have any comments from our superintendent? Uh, Mr. Cowart did text me this morning. Uh, I found out that just before Bronson the High School's graduation last night that he was in fact uh, flying out this morning at 6 a.m. Uh, to go to Miami. Uh, DOE um, requested his attendance uh, at a dual enrollment commissioner summit on dual enrollment down in Miami and so he had to fly out at 6 a.m. this morning uh, so he ex expressed he wanted me to express uh, how excited he is representing Levy County uh, in Miami this morning and uh, he's sorry he missed the board meeting uh, here in Levy but uh, he did want. He did give me a few comments, and, and I had actually started some of these comments. But he did want to uh, commend our schools on their graduations, and uh, he, you know, every year, as I go to all of them, and, and he does too. And so each one is unique, and I think that's what, what kind of makes um, Levy special. Williston Middle High School this year with their band out there and playing some uh, senior selections and, and other. Um, and other songs um, that was very special and something new for them and uh, chief of middle high school they had their signature brand which was uh, unique and uh, and, and uh, for those that weren't there right as we were about to get started it rained and um, so we were a little delayed getting on the field but um, as we took the, the field and we walked out there was actually a rainbow um, out there and so um, Mr. Coward thought that was very special, and it was. Cedar Key, um, they were celebrating the academic and scholarship success. Um, that's one of the things that makes Cedar Key unique, and they do the scholarships along with their graduation services, and it's always very special. Uh, Bronson Middle High School had a very large class. They, they always um, get together in um, uh, Senor, Sen, Senora uh, Noble, Miss uh, Jan Noble, um, comes out and she leads uh, everyone in the alma mater, and it's always very special. So each one is a little unique and um, and special. Um, some things that I'd just like, like that, I would just, you know, student success, graduations are great, and, and, you know, all comes down to hard work by all staff, and I mean from transportation to uh, food service, uh, all the staff of the schools, transportation, maintenance, and uh, certainly uh, the people here at our district offices who work so hard uh, to achieve that success. We've had a lot of uh, retirements from our, uh, in all of our schools and our staff, and we appreciate uh, all of those employees who have given uh, many years of service to Levy County. Um, we have uh, one that's fairly new that I, I do want to point out. Uh, Ms. Catherine Lawrence at Cedar Key School um, has announced that she is retired and certainly will be missed. She's been an employee since 2007. And uh, I had the privilege of working with her while I was principal at Wilson Middle High School. She was our turnaround director and certainly was instrumental in going from an F to an A in a few short years. 
Um, so uh, she's been a valuable asset in many different roles um, and uh, has served us well. And the citizens of Cedar Key and Lee County, um, the last few years, principal of Cedar Key. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Dr. Hall. Dr. Hall has been with us since uh, 2004, I believe, and um, has served. She, she's outdone me on superintendents, I believe. I think she's one <laughs> up on me. Uh, but we've uh, both been here many years through various superintendents and um, has done such a tremendous job. Uh, one of the things that I think I will remember forever uh, Dr. Hall is all means all, your mantra, uh, you believed it, and uh, even at times when we may not have agreed on, on things, we, we knew that was in your heart and that anything you did, any position you took or anything you did was always in the best interest of students at the, in Lee County. So I appreciate all you've done for uh, our school district. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Mr. Roberts, do you have any comments? Uh, first, I want to apologize for not being here last week. I was off on my anniversary trip, so I missed all the graduations. And then one last night, I was actually at the FFA, Wilson FFA banquet. So, But I do apologize. I know my first year, I hated to uh, not be here, and it was just a conflict. That, um, but I did, you know, when I did take on this job. I did say I take family first and that was actually my 20th anniversary so I felt like that was important to do that. So, but I do apologize for not being able to attend. Um, certainly I'm missing the Mexican restaurant. Uh, certainly I know that's always been something I think my daughter Annabelle was the last year, I think it was the last time they had done it was her year class. So it's been a little while so it's good to see that back and saw a couple family members participate and so it was Kind of good. It's awesome. Uh, them going, they had a good time. Um, so um, this, all the banquets that went on, turned out good, and uh, just good seeing the success. Of everybody, you know, all the scholarships, and just you know, just celebrating the students and the teachers, and just just been a great experience. And this is, like I said, a fun time of year. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Please come um, I have a little bit today. I just want to say thank you to Ms. Rollins. No, she's not here. Um, for her presentation, I'm very concerned with our math gains in Levy County. So I, I love that we're going to implement that into, you know, kind of getting ahead of it. I know that um, we're doing the best we can with our teacher shortage, and our wonderful teachers are trying to do the best they can. It all catches up to you when you hit the ACT and the standardized test. So I, I love that we're being proactive and getting uh, getting ahead of our um, math situation. Um, I want to ask for prayers for the two boys. Most of you guys probably know there were two boys in Yankee Town that were involved in a, a horrible four-wheeler accident. One is still in ICU. So asking for prayers for him and his family. Um, and now for the good stuff. Yankee Town won District I Ready Award for Math, which is a big deal for Yankee Town. So we're super proud of that. Um, and Miss Westfall wanted me to personally thank Miss um, Baby McBride. That's Miss McBride's daughter. We call her Baby McBride. Miss Hicks, Miss Perkins, Miss Ortiz, Miss Cook, Miss Clark, Mr. Vergano, and the wonderful math coach Miss McBride. Who, if we could clone her, I've said it a million times. She's just amazing. And Miss Woodard. Um, the top I Ready teachers for Yankee Town were Miss Perkins for reading, Miss Watson, who's also the reading coach, and there was a tie between Miss Clark and Miss um, Ortiz for math. So super proud of Yankee Town wrapping up the year on a positive note. Um, graduation, I only hit one this year because I had one graduating, um, but it was wonderful and it is my favorite time of the year. Um, all the celebrations, all the banquets. Um, but it's also super exciting to see a student cross the stage that we have expelled and that has come back and graduated. So we had one of those, I won't say any names at Williston, but I was super proud of him for um, crossing the stage. Um, and last but not least, Dr. Hall, I'm, I'm going to miss you. You've done, you're just such a role model and have done such an amazing job for our district and everything you do, you just are the most professional person. You are so thorough, and our district is going to greatly miss you. I'm going to miss the celebration. I'm going out of town right after this. So 
but we love you and best of luck in your retirement and come back if you want to. <laughs> and that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Boyle. Um, I'll just kind of ditto a lot with the graduations. The graduations have been great to attend. Um, Dr. Hall, I said it at the last board meeting, I, I missed last week's, but the one, I mean, last two weeks, but the one before that, um, you will be truly missed. <clears throat> and what Mr. Lott said, I couldn't say any better about Mrs. Lawrence. Those are going to be big shoes to fill. Okay, moving on. Um, happy things. <laughs> The Mexican restaurant, I was fortunate enough to attend, I got a little email, but um, that little boy that you saw up there who they interviewed, James, he was my server. And oh my word, when Mrs. Lyle said they took this seriously, mm -hmm. I was blown away because he came up to me and said, hello, how are you doing today? My name is James, and I will be your server. What can I get you? I mean, without skipping a beat. I even tried to say, well, hello, James. My son's name is James. Mm -mm. Couldn't, I could not even interrupt him. He was so focused. Um, I would love to see that. See the other schools follow that, you know, and, and do the grant. And I, it would be neat. Certainly would. It, it would really be neat to see. Um, Yesterday at the staff meeting in Cedar Key, I know the Algebra 1 testing was happening today, but the data that they've received so far, there's been increases, so they've surpassed the goal that they set out, and they were very excited about that. Um, Mrs. Kathy brought that forward. And just personally, I appreciate everyone's prayers and thoughts. Sorry I had to miss the last meeting, but I appreciate your prayers and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, it's summertime almost. Everybody's excited about getting out of school, and they've done an outstanding job. And I just uh, want to wish everyone a, a great summer. Uh, I know a lot of us will still be here and still working, but it's um, I'm, I'm happy the teachers get that break. Um, graduations were outstanding, and like Mr. Lott said, it's it's so neat because they are unique. And even though we're all Levy County, each school is individual, and they do their own thing. And it's just it's great to recognize that and what those students have accomplished and and the hard work of the teachers and the staff that's that cannot go and ignore and they, they do a fantastic job and what all the principals put into it and um, you know with the, even with the timing they, they they worry about that and they want to make it perfect so um, really enjoyed graduations I think that's that's what we're here for um, and to see those accomplishments um, Thank you all for being here, and um, hope we see each other soon. And um, sorry, Dr. Hall, one thing. I did change my mind. I did want to say something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, were we were waiting on you. <laughs> well, maybe a few words. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Just want to thank this board and all the previous boards. Okay. They're not rep members that were not represented today. When I came to the district in 2004, I knew I was, it was God sent for me to be here. Um, Levy County wasn't on my radar at that time, but God has a way of working through us to be where he wants us to be, to make a positive difference. And for me, in the lives of our children, as Ms. Amat shared previously, it's about every kid, because every kid matters. I always say, and I've heard many of you say, our families are sending the most precious jewel to us, however our little people come to us or the big ones as well. And so we're going to do all that we can to support them. We're them accountable, but support them. But I will tell you the work that I've been doing in, in Levy County is just not my work. It's a collaboration. It's all of you as board members who have approved things to support what we do in the schools. I couldn't do my job without you, my colleagues, working collaboratively for the same cause. I have mixed emotions about leaving and departing without having a choice. I've signed the dotted line. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's no turning back. But I will tell you, one thing I have decided to do, because I'm not going to go home and sit. You know me so well. I'm going to be energized by me. I'm going to be doing things. But in terms of supporting schools and being hands-on, 
I sent out one year. I'm like, this came late. And I haven't marked in this binder. It's thick. I can't hardly sip it anymore. There's so much stuff in here. And I'll come back and I'll volunteer. And I'll work alongside our peers. If you would have me do me. I have some other districts who have reached out to me as well. And my heart is here. It always will be. So I want you to remember, I'm very thankful for the opportunity. And Mr. So is correct, we've gone through quite a few superintendents over the time. But they've always been very supportive of my work, our work, and supporting our kids. And I thank you for all that you've done. And I will miss you as well. And I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm going to say I'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Paul. Thank we you. love you so much. Um, if there's nothing else, meeting adjourned.